Momentum is mass times velocity. That's something you probably know already from GCSE physics. We can write them in symbols, P is mv. And you also know that the unit of mass is kilograms, the unit of velocity is meters per second, and therefore the unit of momentum is kilograms meters per second. And also, from previous years, you would remember that Newton's second law is F equals ma, so that's force is mass times acceleration. But did you know that the idea of momentum could be used in Newton's second law? Newton's second law, we have F equals ma, force is mass times acceleration. We can rewrite that as mass times the change in velocity divided by the time it takes to do so. Now we also know that momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So let's see how we can manipulate this equation and substitute that into the original f equals ma equation. We have to rearrange it so that mass becomes our subject. So mass is equal to momentum divided by velocity. And if this equation is specifically for a certain change in velocity, there must be a certain change in momentum. So we write it as m is equal to delta p divided by delta v. So delta here represents that it is a change of something. So let's substitute it back into f equals ma. So that gives us force is equal to delta p over delta v times delta v over delta t. The delta v's cancel out, leaving us with force is equal to the change in momentum divided by the change in time. Remember that this equation is derived from Newton's second law f equals ma. We can rephrase Newton's second law and say that the force being applied on an object is equal to the rate at which this object changes its momentum. Let us rearrange this equation so that we get change in momentum on its own. We have a special name for change in momentum, and that is impulse. So in other words, impulse is equal to the force exerted on the object times the time taken to exert this force. On the left hand side of the equation, that's impulse, that's change in momentum. Earlier we've established that momentum has the unit of kilograms meters per second. On the right hand side, we have Newton's seconds. Therefore, we can equate the two sides and say that kilograms meters per second is equal to the unit newtons seconds. Finally, we have to know how to extract information from a force time graph. Again, we'll refer back to the equation change in momentum is force times time. And in my graph, since I have force on the y-axis, time on the x-axis, if I find the area of the graph, that is equivalent to force times time. So if an exam question says to use a force time graph to calculate the impulse of an object, all you need to do is work out the area. This video was a very quick recap of what impulse is. Um, hopefully, it's helped answer some questions.